Welcome, welcome, good afternoon. God bless you, thank you for joining. Um, I want to give God all the glory for today. I want to give God all the glory. Uh, we'll go right into it. Uh, just give me a few moments. Uh, then we will, we will go right into it. Thank you again for joining. Thank you for joining. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, today, as announced, we will be talking on how to deal with changes in life and marriage. How to deal with changes in life and marriage how to deal with changes in life and marriage. Um, let me also start by again uh, laying some ground rules. I did that last week. Last week was our meeting edition. I did that last week and um, uh, I want to, for a while I will be saying it until we all get used to it and we understand. The ground rules is this, we, we, life is all about different opinions, different um, ideas and all that, but please let us understand that our guide in this time that we have together is the Bible. We, there is no apology about that. The, when we have difference and diverse opinions, we revert to the Bible. Okay, so the Bible is our guide. The Bible is what we will uh, revert to. The essence again of man to man is to make it uh, interactive, to make it open and candid. There will, there will issues we'll be discussing will be issues that we would, I would ask for your comments, I'll ask for your um, contributions, and then we'll learn together. Okay, so uh, please let us know that. I'm, I also want to emphasize the fact that Man to man is not only for married men. The, the, it, since we started uh, Jesus Men's Intercessor, I, I have uh, been surprised at the way people generally conclude that when we talk about a men's forum, a men's program, you are very referring to, to, to married men. No, it's not supposed to be. That we, there are people we call young men, isn't it? And young men may not be married yet. So, you know, if you are a young man, this will benefit you. This will benefit you. Um, in, in, in one's journey, you discover that you begin to ask yourself, who teaches the boy to become a man? If you're not careful, in many cultures, they just assume that, okay, they know it, or at best they teach them how to make money. There are basic things that I have seen that many men don't know that age will not give you. It's not because you are a certain age, automatically you know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. So, you have to learn it. There should be forum for you to learn it. If, you're, if, if they're holding a marriage seminar, you just got there's only women, or mostly women over there. And some men will even be making fun of them, oh, you just go and do it, and so on and so forth. No. And that's why you find in mar many marriages, the woman is fully developed emotionally, mentally. The man is sometimes, so he just bullies his way through. So please encourage young men to be part of this. Share this. Encourage them. If um, in any way you missed our maiden edition, it has been uploaded to my YouTube channel. Please feel free to watch it. Um, I believe by the grace of God, you will be blessed. We, we, we discussed ego, how to deal with our ego as men. So if you uh, think, if you missed that maiden edition, please go to my YouTube channel 
to watch. And I trust that God will bless you. As you're watching me, please feel free to share, invite people. Let them also be blessed by this. Hallelujah. Now let's go straight to what we have for today. Dealing with changes in life and ministry. Let me start with some basic truths. Okay, some basic truths. Number one, the only thing that is constant in life, like you must have had it being said over and over, is change. Change, the only thing that is constant. Change will happen. As a matter of fact, only God that cannot change. Scripture says the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let us understand that. It's only God that does, cannot change or will not change. Human beings change. Situations change. We'll go, we'll go deeper into that as we go along. Let us also know that people change, situations change. Right? People change, situations change. Whether deliberately, whether through no fault of theirs, it doesn't matter. But people change. Situations change. It is not the situation you were 20 years ago that you are now. In fact, for that matter, we're in the present. Very, very good example. This pandemic, this lockdown. In fact, some people believe that things can never be the same again. And that is the truth. It's so, it's so, if they had predicted, maybe even last year, that people will proudly cover their faces and go out, cover their noses and look, look funny. And they will move around. In fact, official programs, official events, people put it. And I know you must have been seeing it on, 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 on social media now, how people are beginning to turn into a fashion. It goes with what you wear. You know, I saw a man on, on a program once, he, he wore a dark suit. And of course, his um, face mask was also dark. You know, and, and people were just, people are beginning to put it, include it in the fashion. It's, it's unbelievable. Last year, if somebody had predicted this, would have said, no, there are bound to be changes. After this lockdown, changes will occur. Changes in all kinds of ways. I don't want to get ahead of myself. All right, so let's go on, you know. So, um, people change, situations change. Number three, change is not necessarily a bad thing. Change is not necessarily a bad thing. You will, you will, you know, the way we talk about change, it connotes that you are accusing the person you are talking to as if he has done something bad. For example, if you tell, you have changed, though, you have really changed. What you are saying is that he has changed, it, it, he has changed to something bad. Change necessarily, may not necessarily a bad thing. You know, and that means that sometimes we may need to embrace change. We may need to embrace, not to run away from it, not to be scared of it, but to, 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 to embrace change. Also, change may not be change in the real sense, in the real sense of it. It may just be that you 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 are just noticing it it may just be that you are just noticing what you call change you have changed though most often than not especially when it comes to relationships most often than not those things that you talk about as change now have been there before now that maybe you did you excused away or you did not you know, like they say, that some people say love is blind. What it simply means that it's not as if love is literally blind like that. What it means, you have blinded your eyes to what is obvious before you. You give excuses for those shortcomings at that point in time. It's not as if love is blind. You were seeing it, or she was seeing it, but she was just excusing, turning a, like they say, turn a blind eye turns a blind eye, refuses to see it, refuses to acknowledge it. So he says, he says, he says I love is blind. Then when, after a while, after your face has come down, so to speak, you now say, eh, you have changed. No, no, no. He has not changed or she has not changed. 
you were just trying to notice it now. The signs were there. There were signs of those things before now, but you refused to acknowledge. So, you, you, you know, it, it's, it's there. Also, some changes are inevitable. Some changes are inevitable. There is nothing you can do about certain changes. I will go into uh, details later. I'm just giving you some like nuggets. Some, some, some changes are inevitable. All right? Another point is, whether you like it or not, responsibilities bring change. Responsibilities bring change. Someone who is carefree. Let, let me, when I, was, when I was young, very younger than this, I'm still young, when I was younger than this, um, and I was not married, people tell me, maybe I will not accept myself, but people tell me that I was a rough driver. I could be, I was very fast. I could drive, I couldn't care less. I would just drive unbelievable speed. Unbelievable speed. When I look back and think now, I say, wow, it's only God that could have saved me. Unbelievable speed. But, when I got married, <laughs> nobody sat me down to tell me that, oh, see, your driving has to be more responsible. Nobody. They didn't need to tell me. So if I carry on, put my family in the car, I know I have to be extra careful. Responsibilities bring change. Someone who is, who is, um, who, there's a way you behave when you don't have a child and when you have a child. For example, even, let, let's take it simply, time. The time you devote, the time you devote to things, you discover that no, I have this baby. Before then, maybe you, you spend time in other things. But because of that, so there are some changes that are that are inevitable. And then before you start pointing fingers, oh, you have changed. This again. Can you also realize that you too might be changing? Don't forget, I said. Everybody changes. People change and all that. Could you, you two will need to acknowledge the fact that you also change. So if you know that both of you are the, the, your colleague at work, people are changing, you will be, you'll be more, more careful in your criticism. You will be more careful in your criticism. Okay? So let us, let us understand that, that people you also are changing. Okay. Now, what does change mean? Change mean, simply means that something, there is something, but some things have been added or subtracted. In other words, that particular thing or person has been altered. That's change. That particular understanding or that particular situation has been altered, whether added to or subtracted. That is change. You say, oh, that situation has changed. Something has been added to it. Something has been subtracted. It has altered. It is not as it used to be. That is change. Okay, so let's talk about before change. Don't forget we are saying how to deal with changes in life and marriage. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about before the change happened. I'm going to use marriage for convenience. I'm going to use marriage now as a case study because then uh, uh, changes in life and marriage okay but let me use marriage as a case study before the change maybe before you got married all right let's let's look at the marriage getting married as the point of change but before you got married there are certain things you you were doing maybe you are eager to please and i'm talking be behaviorally your behavior, you are eager to please. You, you want to please the person. You refuse to get angry easily. Maybe for that matter, you hide your anger. 
normally the things that maybe your 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 siblings know that hey 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 don't try this but when it comes to someone you're going out with you try to to be a nice person so you are eager you are eager to please the person that's behavior and so that we are establishing what you had before okay we are saying the marriage is the change but before the marriage how were you you are eager to please behaviorally just like you find some people when they want to get a job they are the best they beg they kneel down they do all kinds of things appeal they pray they do all that before they get a job so if you use that at the point of interview to say okay oh he, he greeted me so nicely he must be a nice person when he was looking for the job okay so let, let's 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 also look at um, um you are eager to also please physically you are eager to please physically now i'm talking about dressing now i'm not talking about sex you want to please him or you you give sex or that's not what i'm talking about you are eager to please physically in form of dressing i saw a young man some time ago i've known the young man before now and uh, maybe i've always complained about his dressing a bit rough i've always asked him to take care of himself and all that so after a while that it, it was it there was a gap between us saying then i saw him the next time immediately i saw him i knew he was in a relationship i knew immediately and i told him i said wow this relationship is really having a positive effect on you why because his dressing had changed he was well turned out now he was looking neater he was looking you know he was looking good so when you are in a relationship you know you 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 are eager to please physically in form of dressing you also overlook many things you give us i just told you about when people say love is blind you overlook it say hey this anger this this anger that i'm seeing uh so then maybe it's me it's me that caused it you know he's not he does he didn't want to get angry oh. he didn't want to get angry it's me that caused it all kinds of excuses you overlook those things. You overlook such things. Somebody raises his hand to slap you in courtship and you are justifying it. So when you not get married and it removes belt and begins to beat you, you say he has changed. No, he didn't change you. He didn't change at all. He gave you some signs. He gave you some signs that you did not uh you, you know you did not take into uh consideration you are also eager for each other's company oh you want to spend time with each other and again i'm talking about before wedding as a matter of fact i i, I believe those are the things you know whether you're in love or not you want to spend time with each other you call each other on the phone you spend time you repeatedly uh, if if a man does not run after you during courtship and spend time, I'm telling you, sorry, it's gonna go worse during wedding, a uh, marriage. If a man, it is in your courtship that the man will want to call you, send chat to you. You wake up, you meet his chat. You you he calls you twenty times in a day, and then you're feeling cool as a woman. Okay, that that you want to, you are eager to be in each other's company. And then you are sexually attracted to each other. That doesn't mean you fall into it. But you are sexually attracted to each other. And that's why you find many churches who put some parameters in place to make sure that as much as humanly possible, they, they help the, the, the unmarried in their churches not to fall into the sin of fornication. Why? Because at that point in time, you are sexually attracted to each other so you take it you, you you are very careful so let's fast forward from courtship you go into marriage okay we fast forward now we want to address different kinds of changes which we cannot possibly cover everything here but i'll just mention some physical changes physical change don't forget the other time i said i said 
he, 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 uh, he got to please physically in dressing and all that. Now, physical changes. He, he, you have gotten married. The man changes, changes physically. The woman has changed physically. A, a, a slim woman in a couple of years, particularly after childbirth, through no fault of hers, becomes bigger. And I've met men who will say, no, I don't like big men, big women. No, 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 I don't like big women, big women. No, I just want them slim. Hey, if, it's, if that is the reason why you married the, the person, I'm sorry, you, you are in for a shock because most people change physically when they get married. Maybe except celebrities who will go and do plastic surgery and really do a lot of exercises and but generally speaking people change and mostly people get bigger mostly people get bigger okay so that's it that's a change if the man begins to get pot belly big tummy or bald head his hair begins to to dry up and goes and resign rescind and rescind and goes different changes all the not so very pleasant one or the unprepared for an accident happens. An accident happens. And then a two-legged man or woman becomes crippled. What happens? What you didn't prepare for. Someone with two eyes suddenly becomes blind. You married each other fully able and everything, but something happens. Life happens along the way. That's that physical change. We're talking about how do you deal with changes in life and in marriage. Okay? Number two, physiological changes. Now, physiological changes are different from physical changes. Alright? They are different. Physical changes has to do with the body itself. Physiological changes has to do with the body functions. For example, your taste buds can change. I, I, I think over the years, the things I liked have changed as for the, maybe the food I eat. Personally, uh, there was a time I used to like this. After some years, your, 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 your taste buds can change. What you used to like, you may not like them anymore. That's, that, that could be Nobody prays for it, but you find women who, after having a child, undergo what we call postnatal depression, postnatal stress. And that's a problem. That's a change. Or, in marriage, a woman can, can after a child, lose or have a reduced appetite for sex. And the, the man is frustrated. And the woman says, I'm just not interested. It could be, excuse me, it could be, temp, it could be temporary, but these things happen. It could be temporary, but this, the woman will just lose interest. Or even the man. The woman that, is, that used to be trimmed and, 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 uh, and so the figure ate all kinds of things, and begin, you begin to notice that the breasts, are sagging. And then the woman's tummy is not coming down as you would want it to be. Okay? Let's go on to the third one, the what we cultural changes. Ibo marrying a Yoruba man, a white man marrying a black man. Or even within your area, different towns. Or different cities with different do's and don'ts. Okay? That is a cultural change. And people have sometimes cultural shock. Cultural shock. Say, eh, is this, how you, is this how you behave in your place? Is this how you do? And if you're not careful, someone... You know, for example, we, we all have different ways that we express our respect. I always say that's very, very wrong... For you to use your own culture to measure the values in another person's culture. 
So if in your own culture you prostrate to, to greet, to show respect, and somebody, somebody, another culture does not do that, doesn't mean the other culture is not respectful. No, they have their own way of showing respect. So cultural change. That could be a cultural change. Or what about environmental change? Bring, by the way, feel free to write your comments, questions, suggestions, or opinion. You know, I will read them. We can discuss them. I'm trying to. I'm trying to make sure that we don't uh, do much of preaching. You are. You are. You are free to please make your contributions. I would uh, surely read them, and it will be a blessing for every one of us. Okay, now, I'm just the anchor man. Uh, we can do this together. All right, let us do this together, please. Okay, so we're talking about environmental changes. Environmental changes. All right, so maybe you, you change your location. You change your location from, from one particular city to another. <laughs> Let's imagine that um, you, you, you from one village you move to an, a city, a, a bustling, bubbling city, surely there will be some changes that you have to make. There will be some changes. Or then, career changes. Career changes. <laughs> a teacher that goes to work, maybe 7 a.m., closes around 3, and then he, he gets a job, he gets a job in the bank where they don't have a closing they don't, they don't have closing hours, so to speak. <laughs> Such a person will there will be changes in his or her life. There will definitely be changes in his or her life. So there, there are many more. There are many, many more uh, changes. You can you can you can you can send uh, some changes that you that I have not touched, right? So how do you deal with these changes? Whether career whether environmental, whether situational, your situation has changed, you know, things, things, how do you deal with them and still, because you see, some people have allowed the changes to overwhelm them. Some people have allowed the changes to overwhelm them and they didn't deal with it properly. And because they didn't deal with it properly, it, it, it brought a lot of emotional and psychological problem for them. It brought a lot of uh, emotional problems, psychological. They, they couldn't deal with it. And that's why you find some people go into depression. And to the, uh, in some extreme cases, some have committed suicide. Maybe, for example, you lose a, your job. If you are not able to deal with it, some have, by reason of that, gone into depression. Some have become drunkards. They just start to drink. Why? Because there was a change, but they couldn't deal with it. There was a change, but they couldn't deal with it. So you have to understand. You have to deal with it so that you will still come up. You will still come on top of you. You still come up better. A, a, a better person. You'll be able to look back and say, even though there was a change in my life, yes, I am able to, I, I, I'm able to overcome the stress. And why this is very important for everybody, but particularly for men, is because, like I always say, there are a lot of people. There, is, there are lots of people that you can affect by your actions or inactions. If you are married, you have your wife, you have your children. If you don't deal with the change. The effects of, of your behavior will trickle down. You are tensed in the house, the whole house will be tensed. Some have become, because by reason of the changes that they were not able to deal with, they had become violent to their wives. Situations, I've seen situations where a husband loses his job, and from that moment on, there was a problem in their home. And that was how divorce came. They couldn't deal with it. One thing led to another, to another, to another. From the point of the time, the husband lost his job. So it's very crucial to know how to deal with changes. 
to identify how to deal with changes. Okay, so let's go to how do you deal with changes, whichever way it comes. How do you deal with changes? Let's, let's go to how to deal with changes. First of all, understand the peculiarities of the change. If you like, I say the futures of the change. The peculiar, okay, this change now, what does it bring to me? What has it brought? What is the implication of this change? You will have to break it down. Don't, don't just, don't gloss over it. What is this change? I've had to move from a village to a city or from a city to, to a village. What is the implication? I look at it. I've had to move from one country to another. Okay? I've had to move from one country to another. What is the change? Okay? So, these are things. First of all, understand the peculiarity. Understand the peculiarity. Understand the features of the change. After you have understood it, admit it. Don't deny it. Don't excuse it. Be realistic about it. And avoid arguing about it. Don't push the blame. And you are the cause of it that made me to change. No, 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 no. no. You, you caused it. You did this. Admit it. Be realistic about it. And avoid arguing about it. Now, that, like I said, it's not all changes that are bad. The ones that are good, oh, okay, work on it together, work on it by yourself, and so on and so forth. If, let's say, you've got a better job, but it demands you to spend more time with the job, your friends can complain. Ah, we, are, we used to go out together, but now we can't see you anymore. Uh, you know, there are cool, little things like that. And it could be a big thing depending on your, your, your life, your lifestyle. So you used to spend time with them after work because your work was steady. You know you, are, you close work by five and then you, you go to the club by seven and all of that. It was, that's how you, you know, you, you, your friends. But suddenly you've got a job that maybe it's a rotor kind of thing or maybe... It's a management job that you could have a meeting up until 9 p.m. So it could be a realistic and inevitable change. There's nothing you can do about it. But there are some that are not good. You really have to deal with it. For example, if spiritually, if, if you discover that your, 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 your Bible study life has gone down or your prayer life has gone down, don't excuse it. Admit it. So you're going to ask God to help you with that. Don't excuse it. Admit it. And now, because like they say, a problem once known is half solved or something. The, the, what I've discovered in counseling is that for as long as the person you are discussing with or counseling does not realize the point, or his situation or her situation, he, there is no solution cannot begin to happen. Until he gets to the point to say, okay, I realize this. The prodigal son was going on with his life. And let me tell you this, it was not the very day that he started eating with the pigs that he realized it. He was, maybe he was still doing Yes, I will continue. Things will change. Maybe he was still saying all kinds of things. Maybe he was still saying all kinds of things. Maybe he was still excusing it. Maybe he was still... To, oh, oh, until he came to himself. I always love that. He, he, there is a, re, a point of realization that he wants to get to. If you don't get to that point of realization, nothing changes. People can see it. If you yourself don't see it, you cannot change. If you yourself don't see that thing, let one million people around you say, ah, you have to change. Ah, man, you have to change. This or doing is wrong. If you don't see it yourself, it cannot, the change cannot come. So, but what I find about many men, not all, many men, is how they excuse their, their situations, practical situations. 
how they excuse it, how they justify it. How they justify it. But I'm telling you, don't admit it. This is the situation. Alright? This is the situation. Okay? So number two, we're talking about or number three, how to deal with change. Now, we have talked about the change. We have talked about uh, what change means. We have talked about that change doesn't necessarily have to be bad. It doesn't, you don't have to have in mind that always oh, says change is bad. No. So we're saying how do you deal with the change, the, the, the change that may come your way as a man. Um, it, the, sec, the third point is what I call negotiation. Negotiation. If the changes are many or even inside a change, negotiate, identify the ones you will need to embrace and accept and the ones you will need to say no. I have to deal with this thing. No, I can't allow this to continue in my life. This is a bad change. I'm changing in this area. I find out that I, I, I'm getting easy. I get angry easily. I don't, I don't used to do that. What is wrong? So you, there's a negotiation. Identify the ones that you need to change. You need to embrace and accept and say, oh, this, this is a good change. In other words, in every change, there could be some positives. In every change, there could be some positives. So, identify the positives in a change. Identify the positives in a change. Did you identify, identify the things you need to work on? Okay? The things you need to work on. You see, change can lead to growth. It can lead to progress. It can lead to increase. Change, I don't know how much I can emphasize this. The, the way people resist change is alarming because they fear, they fear of the unknown. They fear of the unknown. No, I, I can't. Some people don't want to, there are better prospects in another city, but they don't want to live where they are. The comfort zone. There are better prospects if you just take a step out. But no, they are stay, they, they prefer that where they are. But I'm here to, change can lead to growth. It can lead to increase. It can lead to progress. If it's a positive change. If it's a change that, that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. If it's a change that you, you got a, a, a go ahead from the Holy Spirit from. Now, another, other people can condemn your change. Can condemn it. Can condemn the step. But it doesn't matter. As long as you know that, oh, this, even though this is a situation that has changed, but yes, let me look at the positives. Let, you remember Abraham. Imagine if he didn't leave his, his, his kindred. And say, ah, no, no, no. You know what makes matters worse concerning the, the issue of Abraham? God did not tell him where he was going. God, God just said, yeah, just come. Come follow me to a place I will show you. God has not already God has not yet shown him. Say, the place I will show you. He could have said, no, 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 I, I'm okay with this. Imagine what would have happened if Abraham, don't forget that his father got to Haran and stayed there. He died there. He didn't go through with the change. He didn't go through with that step. Even though when they were setting out, the plan of his father was to still get to Canaan, but go to, go to Haram and stay there. Until God appeared to Abraham and said, you have to take this step. There was a change of, of location, environmental change, if, I, if you like, call it career change. You know, call it career change, call it anything. There was a total change in Abraham's life. Okay, um, I, I have a comment here from uh, uh, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul uh, Ladeji. He says, I'm trying to look at the complete uh, uh, write-up. Uh, let me see. He says, I had a, uh, okay, see, 
Don't expect your husband to change after marriage. Any character you see, it, it didn't. It, it wasn't. It said, I'm, I'm trying to look at. Um, I'm trying to look at the the comments. Mm. I'm trying to look at the comments here. I hope I'm able to. Okay. No, no, no. All right. I can, but I can always guess what it says. Any character you see, maybe when you are cutting, is what you get. In fact, do you know what? I have a rule, a, a rule of thumb that I that I discuss with um, um, people who want to get married, couples and all that. It says, if you see something good in your partner during courtship, divide it by ten and say. If this person does not do this thing when we get married, divide it by 10 and say the, the, the volume of, of which he does this reduces by 10. Will I still love him? Will I still or love her? Will I still want to continue with her? If you see something bad in that person's uh, life, multiply it by 10 and say if this person increases this bad behavior in marriage will I still be able to stay now it's not a scientific thing I call it a rule of thumb you know and, and it has helped a lot of people the truth of the matter is that it is very rare it is very rare for or let me put it this way most of the behaviors you see in marriage there have been signs of it in courtship Believe me, that is the truth. Most of the behaviors you see in marriage, they have been, especially now that you find a lot of desperation and a lot of pretense. People don't actually know each other very well before they get married. And please, I'm not one of those that say, cut each other, uh, date each other for this. No, no, that's what I'm saying. In fact, can you, if you are truly a child of God, what you should do is Go to God, go to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, show me this person's file. You know, like they go, go to some company and say, oh, we have a file about this. Go on. Holy Spirit, show me this person. Even the things that he doesn't want to tell me, reveal it to me. But the question is, are you even spiritually serious? You yourself, are you spiritually up to that level? What will happen 10 years down the line? After, I must have, maybe I must, I must have lost my figure, maybe grown bigger and everything. What will happen years down the line? Father, reveal it to me. Will this man, will this woman still be able to cope? There have been instances of a woman leaving a man because the man lost his job. Or the man misbehaving because he lost his job. It's, it's all the So changes. It's not a question of don't expect your, your, your husband to change. He can, he can, you know, but most of the traits, don't forget that before the anger of Moses that eventually now led to God to say, no, you're not going to see, uh, get into that promised land. Moses had been showing traits of anger before then. You know, he got down from the, from the mountain and in anger, he just threw the tablets. Moses had been dealing, even though a humble man, we, we may not want to blame him, but the truth of the matter is that whether it was his fault or not, that's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that trait had been there. That trait had been there. So, don't, again, don't forget, I was talking about the, the things that we see, that we overlook, that we overlook, that we justify, that we give excuses for. When you now get married, those things will really be there. We show their face. So, let, let's move on. But at the same time, do not let us put aside the power of the Holy Spirit. There is nobody that cannot change for good. There is nobody. So if maybe you have made a mistake, maybe the, the, you made a mistake, but now you are in a situation. The mercy of God is there. The mercy of God. 
and you can, the Bible says the heart of the king is in God's hand. There is nobody that is too big. Bible says it can turn the heart of stone to the heart of flesh. There is nobody that is too big that cannot change. You might have made mistakes. Yes, the things might have been, but now you are married to him. It has happened. Or for that matter, it could even be your career. You might have made a mistake in the area of your career, but yet God can intervene. So with the things of God, we cannot be too final like that and say, oh, no, um, nobody can change. No. Yes, you may it must have been your fault. May yes, you 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 if you had been more careful, maybe you would not have married him. But now it has happened. God can intervene. God can change him. And there are so many examples like that. Okay. Um you know, you 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 can change can also bring spice into your relationship. That's what I'm talking about negotiation, uh, negotiation, and looking at change as a good thing that can bring, um, that can bring um, growth, increase, progress, and don't forget I used the, uh, Abraham as an example. Okay, but the fact of the matter is this: um, I'm, I'm trying to read another comment. Mm. Okay, so now. Somebody said, okay, uh, any character you see now will get worse. <laughs> I think I've answered that a little bit. Uh, maybe that's, a, okay, that's a, a complete statement of uh, what uh, Pastor Paul wrote. Thank you so much, Ibuku, for sending the chat to me. Thank you. Okay, so that's, that's it. Any character you see, yeah, it could get worse, but don't let us be too cynical. Don't let us be too... Uh, negative. It can get better. Love can get better in marriage. All right. Love can get better. I think I've addressed that very well. Good love can, get, especially if Jesus is, is is the center and the head of your home. Things, in fact, it's like they say about, about old wine. Old wine can get better with age. You can love each other with age. It's not so. Oh, I've now lost. Uh, so that will lead me even to what I'm talking about about spicing, spicing. You know, change can help spice your marriage or spice your relationship. Whether it be marriage, and it can spice it up. Okay? You, you know, it can have... It, it, routine is good. A routine is good. It's good. It has... Look, let me put it this way. It has its advantages. Some people's lives are routine. There's, there's a time they wake up. There's a time they go to work. There's a time they, they come back. They have dinner together at home. In fact, you know, there are people who in their homes, they have timetable of the food they eat. Food they eat, they eat on, on Mondays, breakfast, lunch, dinner, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, till Sunday. Week in, week out. I know as you're, speaking, you're listening to me, there will be people like that. I never had that kind of life. I never had that kind of life. But there will be people who, they have timetable for what they eat. Everybody knows what they will eat on Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, Saturday, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, well, thank God for routine has its own advantages, but it could get to a point of being boring. So, you spice, it's some spice, some adjustments, some changes that you mutually agree on. That's the key word. You mutually agree on it um, um, could help your marriage. Could help your relationship, could help your, your, your friendship, could help you in your career. So, you, you know, you, you know, some people are so stuck in the past that when new things are happening, they cannot see it. They are so stuck. Their head is so stuck in the past. Ah, that's how we used to do it in 1970. That's how we used to do it in 1990. That's how we used to... And that's why you notice that most people attack... They are always afraid of every change that comes. I remember when email came. Email. This email that everybody now uses. I know of people who criticize and say, Ah, this is Antichrist. This is Antichrist. Hey, don't take email. They are the chief users of emails now. I remember the same thing when uh, mobile phone came. 
People rose up. Ah, mobile phone is bad. Is this? Is that? This forum is not. For, I'm not. But now, everybody, people, the first, the first impression of people is to attack change or to be afraid of change. But I think I, I hope that with this discussion, you understand that change don't necessarily have to be bad. All right. Look forward. Be forward looking. Don't look at the bad. You know what Ecclesiastes 7 10, 7 10 says? Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 10 says, Don't say why were the old days better. Why were the old days better? Don't say it. Don't keep looking at the old days. Expect something better today and in your future. Alright? I have another question here. Why do you think a man will get more secretive in marriage. They keep a whole lot of secrets without the knowledge of the spouse. Okay? Why do you think a man will get more secretive? A lot of reasons. A lot, a lot of reasons. Why? As a matter of fact, this is part of um, one of the topics in subsequent weeks. Okay? This part of, this addresses part of the topics of subsequent weeks. I will note it and then we'll address it there because it will take a lot of time to explain. There are different reasons. It's not supposed to be. Ideally, you are supposed to be one. Ideally, you are supposed to be one. So if you are one truly, you are not supposed to keep secrets from, from each other. Ideally. And that's the ideal marriage in the Bible. Don't forget, I, I've said part of our grand rules is that it were, uh, there are diverse opinions, diverse excuses and justifications, but we always look at what does the Bible say about situations. What the Bible say about this is that you are not supposed to keep secrets from your wife. You are not supposed to keep secrets from each other. Why? Simply, you are supposed to be one. You are supposed to be on the same page. Okay? But there are different factors that necessitates people or men, even women, don't say men alone, women keeping secrets from their uh, from their husbands. Husbands keeping secrets from their wives. So it's part of the question or a topic that we're going to discuss um, in, a, in a couple of weeks time. We will deal with this in detail, but I think I've just touched it briefly. I'll, I'll let you know when we're going to be talking about that. So, um, we have like five more minutes. Uh, again, we are talking about how to deal with changes. And we talked about how to admit it, negotiate it. Uh, then, 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 communication. It's, 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 it's so important. Communicate. All of the above that I've talked to, talked to about negotiation, admitting, is a function of communication. Good com speaking, listening, you know, understanding from both sides. When I say not only husband and wife, I'm talking about even maybe you have someone you're dealing with. Okay? And you're being, there are certain changes. The communication is very key. Now communication is, I'm not talking about criticism or condemnation or confusion. Don't be judgmental. There are changes, but you're not meant to criticize or condemn or bring confusion into the matter. Communicate. Discuss it. It is part of your communication that makes you to admit it, to negotiate it, to look at the reality of it. And let me say this. Don't guilt trip yourself or guilt trip your partner. Don't guilt trip. Don't guilt trip. And make that person feel guilty or something. No, just deal with the matter. Okay? Just deal with the And then, men, please don't bully your way through communication. Never, ever. If you want the people you're dealing with to express themselves, men, learn not to bully your way through discussions. Learn not to intimidate your way through in the course of dialoguing or communicating. You know 
Communication is a two-way thing. You speak, you listen, you hear, and you hear correctly. You hear correctly. Let, let, me, let me give you one assignment that you should do. Either with your partner, with your wife, or with even your business partner. Say something. Say like two, three sentences. And tell that your business partner or your wife to say it back to you. That what did you understand by what I said? You'll be shocked. You know why? Because the way we hear things or what we hear when people speak is different. Sometimes it's way out of what the person is saying. So sometimes you are discussing with someone and then by the time the person says, by the time the person says, um, so you mean, ah, that's not what I said. And he said, that's, that's what I took away from what you said. Ah, how can you take it away when that's not what I said? Yeah, but that's, that's my impression. That's the impression that I got from what you said. So communication is very, very, very important. Appropriate, right, right communication. Encourage the person you're dealing with to, to express himself or herself. Okay? And then, and then give yourself time to deal with the changes. If it's a change that you want to you want to improve upon, maybe it's a negative change, and then you know, so no, 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 I don't, I must not do this. I must really uh, look at myself and say, if it is a change that I need to deal with, you know, then give yourself time, give yourself time, prayerfully, trust God to help you, trust God to help you, and then follow it through. Follow it through, okay? Give yourself time. Give even the other person to time. To, to do it. That, that means, in other words, you have to have patience. Uh, and then, adjust, finally, adjust to the reality of the change. Adjust to the reality of the change. There are, I, I told you the other time that some changes are inevitable. There's nothing you can do about it. If you have moved from a, 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 a village to a town in, on business, Adjust to the reality. Don't sit down and say, ah, when I was in this village, when I was in this, and sit down. Adjust to the reality. Your business used to have one branch. Now it is having about two or three branches or five branches or ten branches. Adjust to the reality. Stop saying, oh, when it used to be like this. No. Adjust to the reality, especially, like I said, if there are good changes, adjust to the reality and 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 get the positives, the best out of it. Adjust to the reality. Okay? Now, let's say someone, when you fit, let me give you an example. Dressing. There are certain things or certain dresses that a big person should not wear. A big person should not wear. It doesn't so unless you are you are in denial if you are big you are big there are certain things that dresses they can advertise on tv very tight body kind of dress even both men and women there are I, and then you 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 know you are big you have you have a big tummy and because you think it it suits Someone you are watching on TV, you two wear it by fire by force. You are not adjusting to the reality that you have changed. You are no longer how you used to be 20 years ago. You are no longer how you used to be 10 years ago. Sometimes you find some, some women wearing dresses that shows all kinds of parts of their body that the, the, where they got it from, that's not. if that person had that kind of figure there, they would wear it. Adjust to your reality. This is if you are if you are not if let's say your height adjust your reality. What God has so much done is there are so many good things for who you are if you identify who you are. If it is clothes, if you are big, there are good clothes you can wear for someone that is big. If you are on a small size, there are good things you can wear. For someone, don't let the big one want to wear that of the wide, the, the small person. 
and the small person wanting to wear that of the big person. No, identify, adjust to the reality of your changes. I have changed. I used to be, oh, I used to be uh, size eight, size uh, twelve. Now I'm size eighteen. Up until maybe if you want to go back to size twelve, yeah, thank God for your life. But up until the time you go back to size twelve, adjust to the reality that you are size eighteen. Adjust to that reality and make the best use of that reality. Make the best use of that reality. God bless you. I'm way past one o'clock. Like I said, please keep making this interactive. Uh, share it. Let people be blessed. Share it. It's a form of blessing lives as well. It's not until you hold the microphone that you're blessing lives. Share this. It's, it's free. And can I also ask you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and get some edifying contents that are films, that are teachings, that are messages uh, on my YouTube channel. God bless you. I'm going to see you again by the grace of God next Friday. God willing. And can I say this? Please, take make the best use of lockdown. Lockdown, this lockdown is bringing good things for people who can see. For people who can tap into it. It is not all bad. There are advantages. That's what I call, I did a me message, I think it's on my YouTube, the blessings of lockdown. There are things, there are things, there are thing, good things that can happen and that are happening. That are happening in the, in the course of this lockdown. Don't see all bad. Don't see it all bad. No, there are good things. And God is ready to do good things in your life. Even in this period and after the lockdown. Your life will get better in the name of God. No matter the changes you have experienced, your life will get better. God does not do things uh, and, and leave, leave the, the good things in the past. No, 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 no. Your life will get the glory of the latter shall be greater and better than the former in your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Keep doing great for the King of Kings. I'll see you again next Friday in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you very much.